All right, we'll greet you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Uh, the name above every name. Uh, God allowed us to get up this morning. Amen. We could be in worse shape than what we are. Somebody said, I'm in bad shape this morning. Well, God, God knows our need, don't he? And he knows our being. And I, I'm thankful, amen, for uh, salvation. Thankful that I know my name's in heaven. Amen. Amen. And I appreciate uh, what God done for going home church yesterday. Uh, now I can I can brag on God any time, uh, but as a pastor um, in your church and you see your church getting help, uh, that encourages your heart. Amen. And you say, well, preacher, I didn't see much movement of our people. Yeah, but you're not standing up here. And you're not seeing uh, how God's moving on the congregation. Thank God for the soul that was saved yesterday morning. Thank God for that. And uh, many souls on the altar, both services. And I thank God for uh, the, the camp meeting starting off wonderful. We've uh, just encourage you to uh, continue to pray. There's folks that would like to be here that's uh, uh, not able. Of course, the morning services, uh, most are working. Um, the enemy, you know, sometimes you say, well, why do you have, I'll be honest, the enemy has tried through the years to, to get us not to have this meeting. Yeah. Uh, I'm talking about the morning services, but it, you wouldn't believe through the week, uh, the, the pastors that will tell me, preacher, it's for us. Uh, preacher, it, it blesses us. It helps us. Uh, but we appreciate all the, uh, men of God. I'm talking about men preachers. Amen. If you will stand, if you would, this, this morning, all the men of God. Somebody said, why did you say uh, men preachers? I got in trouble one time, and I'm going to not get in trouble again. Uh, was you, brother? <laughs> but, uh, well, I'll tell you what, tell who, where, your name and where you're from, brother. Ben Coke, Fairview Group Baptist Church. Amen. And Jerry McLean, Redeemed Church. Amen. Brother Rick. Brother Rick, tell about your meeting. Uh, that's going to be August the 20th through the 23rd. And we've got a pretty rough preacher that's coming. Uh, his name is Brother Jeff Duncan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Pray for him. <laughs> sort of geared toward the youth, is that correct? He is. Youth's rattled. Yes. Amen. Brother Larry? Larry Anderson, Bethel Free Will Baptist. Brother Jeff? Jeff Westport Baptist. Yes. Amen. All right. Thank God for you, men of God. Yes. Hallelujah. Let's, uh, I know some of you just stood. Let's stand back to our feet and we'll go to the Lord in prayer. Ask the Lord's blessing. It's good to have uh, the Joy Heirs from Harriman, Tennessee. They're with us all week. Good to have um, the Parsons family from Goshen, Indiana. They'll be with us all week, morning and evening. And uh, um, we just, it's an honor to have those folks and all of our preachers that are coming in. Uh, it's an honor. And we'll make more announcement concerning that. Uh, but let's go to the Lord in prayer and ask God's blessings on this service today. Brother Jerry McLean, would you bless uh, the meeting today?
may be seated. Um, let's just obey him to the day. Let's re, just, just uh, be sensitive to the spirit of the Lord. Remember this altar's open. You don't have to wait on man to call you. While these singers are singing, it won't bother them if you need to pray. All right? It's good to have the joy heirs, amen, from Harriman, Tennessee. You pray for them as they come and uh, minister to us through song. Hallelujah. Anybody here never heard the joy airs? You never heard them. All right. There's, there's a few. Never heard the joy airs. I can set my foot in my mouth a couple count every year. <laughs> uh, but anyway, uh, I remember these folks when I... <laughs> I love you, Miss Debbie. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> but anyway, I've known them for years. Amen. And what a, I appreciate their faithfulness. Amen. You lift them up to Jesus. solo last night, just just me, and uh, uh, really, I, I didn't know how to handle that, Brother Jerry, but I told well, Miss Angie and Brother Jeff this morning, you know, when the good Lord comes by, yes, sir. Uh, Come on, brother. it don't matter, yes, sir. and he, uh, he honored us last night, the, you all know his brother passed away back in June, we lost a month of stuff that we had scheduled and we were just playing catch up and we run ourselves to death. And we had a groundhog 
right in the house in April. Yeah. $23,000 worth of damage. Oh, wow. And we're just now getting that put back together. And uh, uh, and then Friday, Deb's oldest cousin passed away. And uh, she said, sure, she and Sharon said, Ernie, would you go sing Sunday night and let us go to the funeral home? And uh, so we did that. And I told all of that. And, and we've had just all kinds of things happen. And uh, but in all of that, God is still good. Yes, he is. And uh, we'll just uh, try our best. You know, I, now Deb's not getting old, but I, I just turned 74. And uh, Miss Annette, my, my prayer is that we've been doing this 44 years, that we would finish well. We'd never ever do anything to bring a reproach to our heavenly Father. He's honored us and been so good to us. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, that's good. good thing. Okay.
shingles four times. And uh, got the croup this morning. She's, uh, uh, God has been so good to us uh, over the years and watched over us. And uh, I'm uh, uh, just thankful for the blessings that God gives. Yes. Uh, he knows all about us.
Charles preached that every year for 33 years. Some of that he preached every night. Some of it just a night or two after he got so sick. But I, they said last night, sometimes that meeting would break out and then go four weeks, six weeks. Brother Charles preached every night. But his words, I've heard him so many times, he'd say, I wasn't fit to hear. Yeah. And neither was I. I was just a little ten-year-old boy. This month, Brother Jeff, I've been saved 64 years. My mama still goes to that little church. And on a good Sunday, they might have 40. Most of the time, they're in the 20s. And, uh, I've got one of those pews in my basement. And uh, that's my prayer place. And uh, I walk by it and I, I open and wonder, is that the pew that I have at home to get saved? Bless you, Lord. Knowing there's no salvation in that, but it's sure a memory. Oh, yeah. It's a special place. It's a special place. We'll sing one more song and then we'll sit down. I, uh, <clears throat> most people, when they get old, their voices, they sing in the lower register. And uh, my voice has went the other way. I can't sing the low stuff anymore. We recorded and uh, we actually finished up uh, on the 29th. And uh, there were some of those songs, they just have to keep punching me. Because it was just a growl. And I had to hit that note, you know. And uh, but uh, we're thankful for this morning, and we're thankful most of all that I'm pretty much a crybaby. And my preacher preached Sunday. Yeah, that's all right. All right. And, and we had just a wonderful service and had one saved Sunday night. They said, and we've got a, a gentleman at church. If there's any shouting goes on, Brother Joe is in on the shout. <laughs> there's another lady that I, I forgot what he said exactly about her, but. Uh, and then when we sing, you know what I do. I, the preacher was preaching and he said, Brother Joe, no matter what happens, don't ever lose your shout. And sister so-and-so, no matter what happens, don't ever go oh, raise your yeah. 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 And Brother right. Ernie, don't ever do that. Don't ever quit that. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm glad this morning Oh, and he still comes back. Yes, yeah. 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 sir.
good singing. Amen. I tell you, it gets sweeter and sweeter, don't it? Amen. I'm looking forward to heaven. Amen. I can pray, come quickly, Lord Jesus. Yeah. I'm, I'm thankful for the first, well, I'm thankful for all the songs, but uh, one of my favorite is uh, It's Real. Yeah. I'm, I'm just glad I know it's real. Yes, uh, and I'm glad God knows me. When I say that, uh, he's the only one that knows me. That's right. yeah. I live with my wife, have for <laughs> 30, 30, going on 37 years. And she knows me, I think, pretty well. I know her pretty well. But still, God's the only one that knows our heart, Amen. our soul. Amen. And I want you to know this morning that you're looking at a preacher I can lay down at night. I ain't got all against nobody. And I can sleep. How many glad you lay down at night and sleep? Uh, what do you mean, preacher? Through the years I've been lied on? How many have been lied on? I've had, I've had them to take, Brother Jerry, my picture off of the church website, plaster it on Facebook, say that I was a false prophet, that I didn't know what I was a preaching about. Bless him, Lord. And what they're referring to is I was preaching on that we need to get on the altar and get a hold of the horns of the altar. Yeah. Let me still believe that. Yeah. And they took that out of context and saying that was Old Testament. Yeah, there's not no horns up here that you can grab onto, but figuratively speaking, somebody say amen right there. Amen. My wife would get mad and say, Jeff, why don't you go to that person? Why don't you confront that person? I let God fight my battle. Amen. And as long as I know I'm right with God, I've left meetings before. That's, that call the deacons, call the preacher. Let's have a meeting. And my comment at the end of it, as long as I know I can lay down. Amen. As long as I know I've done all I can do. All God's people say it. Amen. It ain't that, hey, it ain't about you and it ain't about me. Right. It's all about the Lord. Amen. As long as I can sleep at night. Right. <laughs> and know that in my heart's right with God. Yeah, that's, right. that's all that matters. Right. It's good to have brother <laughs> Ben Cope. My friend, Amen. Brother Ben's preached a lot in this church as a young as a young preacher. Had to move down. Well, I better not go there. 
<laughs> but anyway, what did you say? Egypt's land. <laughs> Amen. Um, Come on, preacher. I ain't going to say no more. Amen. It's good to have Brother Ben come. He passed with the Fairview Free Will Baptist Church. Good to have his people with us this morning. Amen. But you lift him up to the Lord as he shares his heart. Amen. It is an honor to be in the house of the Lord this morning. I do appreciate the privilege and opportunity to be here. And I thank the Lord of y'all's pastor. I really love Brother Jeff, a wonderful man of God. And as he said earlier, uh, I've done a lot of preaching in this church. Uh, I'd say besides my home church, well, at the time, my home church, Trinity Hill, uh, this is where I've done most of my preaching at, Brother Jeff, I guess would be a, a correct statement. And Brother Jerry used me a ton when I was a young preacher, and Preacher Davin and Brother Jeff, and, uh, and, and it's an honor, and I appreciate you, fellas. I appreciate you, men of God, using me, allowing me to preach and uh, be able to, to stand and proclaim the, the gospel of God. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Brother, I'm a crybaby, too, and I can't help That's it. That's all right. All right. Yeah. Uh, I remember when I was lost and undone without Christ. People would pray. People would call my name out to the Lord. Brother Jeff, people would come and visit me and they'd tell me about God and uh, end up one time a man led me to the Lord. And my life ain't never been the same and I appreciate that. I appreciate all that the Lord's done for me. Uh, good to have all these churches represented here. Uh, going home, Fairview, Redeemed, Bethel, uh, man, wherever the Parsons go to church and the Joy area, man, I don't know how many churches are represented, but there's a lot here. Yeah. Uh, and that's wonderful. West Court, that's wonderful. Uh, and I believe that uh, this is a much needed sermon and uh, maybe not maybe not a typical camp meeting message, but I'm going to preach it anyhow, Brother Jeff. That's what the Lord's laid on our heart and yeah. uh, was able to listen to yesterday's uh, sermon uh, messages, both of those, yesterday morning and uh, uh, yesterday evening. And uh, and I'm glad you said what you said yesterday, preacher. Uh, uh, you know, preaching about, uh, you heard uh, Brother Ross Lewis preach a message. You said you didn't want to preach it because it was his message. And the Lord told you to preach it. You had to preach it. And, yeah. and then Brother uh, brother Barry gets up last night and he preaches a message. And he preaches on the, uh, uses the drug addicts and the, the whores and the drunks and the dope heads. And uh, we're going to look at that today and uh, use the same language that Brother Barry used last night. But going to a completely different way with it. Uh, do we believe that God can still save the lost and dying world? Amen. Well, I'm going to preach on that here in just a little bit. If you have your Bibles, you will turn with us to Jonah chapter number one. Much of our, most of our time will be in Jonah. Uh, we will go to Romans here in a little bit, and we'll also go to Matthew. But uh, we're going to be in Romans or uh, Jonah for most of this. Jonah chapter number one. When we get done here, we're going to go to Jonah chapter number four in just a little bit. Thank you for standing in honor of uh, reading of God's word, but I do have uh, I do have my notes on here, brother. If I can ever figure out how to get them on here, that's bad. You can make them, but you can't get them back up on your phone. Jonah chapter number one. I'm going to start with verse number one. It says, "Now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise and go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness is come up before me." But Jonah rose up to flee into Tarshish from the presence of the Lord and went down to Joppa, and he found a ship going to Tarshish. And so he paid the fare thereof and went down into it to go with them unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. If y'all will bow your heads, go with us to the throne as we ask the Lord's blessings on this service. Our kind and gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we do thank you for the privilege you give us to be here. Lord, we do thank you for your many blessings. And God, we ask that you may... Help us today, Lord, as we try to stand and uh, proclaim your word and preach that that you put on our heart. That, uh, Lord, it might be a help to somebody. Lord, we might be able to, uh, to preach that that's pleasing to you. But, God, that it might be an encouragement to somebody, Lord, that there's a whole uh, a whole heap of people in this world that's lost. And uh, they just need somebody to tell them about Jesus Christ. Yes, Lord. Uh, they just need one person who's willing to get a burden uh, the one person that's willing to, uh, to put their thoughts and their cares aside just for a minute yeah. uh, that we might be able to win them to the Lord. God, I ask you to help me this morning, Lord. I pray that you will lift us up, you anoint us from on high. We thank you for all that you do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 I do want to say this this morning. I appreciate my folks being here from Fairview. Uh, they several of them here this morning and I told them yesterday 
I said, man, it'd be good uh, if some of y'all would come, and they come. I appreciate that. I'm glad they're here because I want them to hear this message too. Uh, and I didn't, and I didn't mean to leave them out, but uh, got shining light Independent Baptist Church here in the back. My brother-in-law, he started a church down the road from where we're at, and they're uh, they're represented here, and I appreciate that today. But I want to start out by saying this: the word of the Lord came to. Uh, Jonah, the Bible says in verse number one, now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the son of Amittai, say, and he tells him what he wants him to do, Brother Jeff, and I was thinking about this, and uh, it's not just a few verses, so it says, arise and go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for the wickedness has come up before me. Now most, I, you, I mean, he's a prophet of God, you'd think immediately he'd, he'd get in a uh, uh, on a horse or a wagon or something that he'd head towards Nineveh, but we know that he did not do that, uh, that he went down to Joppa to hop on a ship to go to Tarshish. Now, the best I can find out, he wasn't going to Tarshish because it was closer or it was a shorter distance. Uh, Nineveh was a shorter distance. Uh, the best that I can read and best I can find out, Tarshish was roughly 2,500 miles away while Nineveh was only about 500 miles away. He was going way out of the way. He was going the opposite way of where he was supposed to be going. And church, I feel like that's us in today's age a lot of times. The Lord, the word of God comes to us. It tell, uh, he tells us to do something, but I feel like we go the opposite way of God, what God would have us to do in the day and age that we live in. Like I said, maybe not a typical camp meeting message, but I, I feel like it's much needed amongst the churches, Brother Jed. So for just a little bit, I'm going to preach on a subject of the title of this message. If this is Christianity, I don't want it, Brother Jeff. Come on. If, if this is Christianity, church, I don't want no part in it. And you say, what do you mean by that? Are you not proud you're Christian? Absolutely I am. But, uh, but the thing we see here is that Jonah, an Israelite, was probably taught uh, from a young child that he was of the chosen people of God. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, more than likely, he was taught that, hey, uh, the Lord picked us above all the other nations that's on earth, and, and we're chosen of God. We're his chosen people. Right. No doubt he was told that most of his life. No doubt he was also probably told that, uh, that any Gentile nation was corrupt and not acceptable of our God. Church, I feel like that's the Christian world that we live in today. I feel like that the Christians are certainly they're satisfied with being in the church house and doing uh, church things and looking like church people, but I believe uh, uh, that we, uh, just like Jonah, just uh, he wasn't going to, uh, to Tarshish because I said earlier it was closer. Uh, he was going to Tarshish because he was afraid uh, that God would be gracious on a heathen nation, and he didn't want that, brother. Amen. He didn't want that. Yes, and so I believe that's how we are. I believe we come to the house of the Lord and we sit on the church pew and we, we tell each other all the time how acceptable we are of God because we're born again believers. How good we look to God because our sins are under the blood and, and how good we look because we're sitting on a church pew in our nice church outfit and we look well. But then also I believe we look at the lost and dying world, Brother Jeff, and I believe, truly I believe, we look at him and we say that you're not acceptable of our God. You're corrupt, you're unworthy, and you're not fit. And I believe that's how we are. And I believe like Jonah, uh, we see the lost and dying world, we see them as unacceptable, we see them as not being uh, worthy of our God. And I've got a few things here that I'm going to read out, things that the preacher mentioned yesterday. Uh, they don't look like us. We won't go see them, we won't go visit them. They don't talk like us. They say things that we don't typically say as Christians, so therefore we're not concerned or we feel like they're unworthy of the blood that was shed on Calvary, Brother Jeff. They're not from our neck of the woods. They're from the wrong side of the track. Do you know what they've done? Did you see what store they came out of? They smell. They're dirty, Brother Jeff. We was down at, uh, and I'm just going to go ahead and say it, you know, we was down at uh, uh, Marion First Free Will Baptist Saturday for our association meeting, and uh, man, they was 
homeless up on the hill up there. This, I guess a little encampment, and I guess there's a problem around here. Your church may be with us just down the road, but uh, we was there, and there was some homeless up on the bank. They were uh, camping there, and, uh, and it, I'm at fault too. I, I mean, I'm at Brother Jeff. I didn't see anybody go over there and invite them folks to church. But Jeff, I didn't see one person go over there and tell them people, said, hey, we're here gathering to worship and serve God. If you're not a born-again believer, will you please come and worship with us? Or if you are, come worship with us. If you're not, you need to be saved. Not a single person went over there, Brother Jeff, that I know of and tried to tell them people about God. Why? Because they looked different. Maybe they smelled funny. Maybe they hadn't took a bath in a while. You're right. You're right, preacher. Take them a plate of food. Give them some kind of kind gesture. And I uh, mean, I preached yesterday, and uh, part of the message that I was preaching yesterday, Brother Jeff, and the title of it is, uh, "Do we make the gospel beautiful to the world?" When they see us, when they look at us as Christians, do they see a beautiful gospel, something that they that entices them to come and be a part of what Very what yes. we're doing? Yeah. So maybe they smell. Maybe they're dirty. I believe this is a big one in today's society. They don't have any monetary value. They can't put $100 bills in the offering plates. And we won't go visit them. We won't go see them. They can't add anything useful to our church. You know what? Uh, you know what? Do you know what their family used to do or what their family still does? I saw him or I saw her do such and such thing. Have you heard let me tell you what sister or brother so-and-so told me. <coughs> Maybe you say, well, he's gay or she's lesbian. And they're not worthy to come to church. Maybe you say, hey, this lady had an abortion or, or maybe this person's on dope or this one's an alcoholic and uh, maybe you, you say, well, this person's been married too many times. They've been married and divorced, and we can't really use them around here. They, they don't fit our lifestyle. They don't look like us, so... Maybe, maybe even they're Mexican. Maybe even they're black. You know what? There's a lot of, a lot of churches where white folks go. They don't want black folks to come be a part of their service. Yeah. Yeah. I'll tell you this. I don't, how many of y'all listen to Phil Kidd? You know Phil Kidd. Brother Phil Kidd, anybody? I was listening to Brother Phil Kidd the other day. I was going to listen to him. But he had a preacher named Lawrence. I think it was Lawrence. Mendez from Detroit, Michigan. He pastors a church up there, and the way he talks, it's in the slums. It's not, not in a good area. Uh, he was raised up there, and this is what he said. Now, some of you might get mad, but I thought it was kind of funny myself. But, uh, but he said he went to this church, and he was preaching. He was telling about his church, and he said uh, after the service, there was a man come up to him. He said, hey, do you let black folks come to your church? This is a Mexican man now. He's Lawrence Mendez. He says, you let black folks come to your church? And that guy said, well, I thought that was kind of odd being from Detroit. You know, that's a lot of black folks up there. And he said, so I replied to the fellow. He said, yes, sir. He said, black folks come. He said, Mexican folks come. He looked at him. He said, and I'll even let a cracker like you come to church. <laughs> church, hey, we, God died for all. Amen. But because they don't look like us, maybe they don't do the same things we do. Uh, now, I ain't going to even act like I was as far off as Brother uh, Barry. Well, what a wonderful message he preached last night, by the way. Uh, the odd bird made it in. Ain't that what it was, Brother? Hey, 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 I was lost and undone, and somebody, Brother Preacher Jerry, somebody cared enough, Brother Jeff, uh, to call my name out to God and they, to come by where I was at and tell me about Jesus Christ. And uh, thank the Lord. So maybe, maybe they don't look like us. Maybe they don't act like us. Maybe they don't do the same things we do. Maybe they're Mexican. Maybe they're black. And do you know what all of that says to them people? Uh, you're not welcome. That's right. That's right. Amen. At our church, and we ain't coming. And we ain't coming to offer a lifeline out of hell. That's right. These people are dying, and they're going. If you will, look at chapter number 3 with me. Chapter number 3, verse number 10. Chapter 3, verse number 10, real quick. Then said the Lord, Thou hast had pity on the, on the gourd, for, for, excuse me, and God saw their works, that they turned from their evil way, 
And God, and, re, and God repented of the evil that he had said and he would, that he would do unto them, and he did it not. Now, so his message was, is go tell these people that they're wicked. Go tell these people uh, that, uh, it says it in verse number two, rise and go to the end of that great city and cry against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. So he had a choice. He could either go out and do what uh, the Lord had told him to do or he could run away from his responsibility. And that's point number one. Uh, Jonah was running away from his responsibility. And church, I feel like as Christians in today's age, we're running from a responsibility that God has given us and you say, well, what responsibility is that? I, was, I wasn't told to go to Nineveh, or I wasn't told to go to Plymouth, or here, or there. Uh, but if you will, turn with us to Matthew chapter 28 real quick. Matthew chapter 28. I'm going to start with verse number 18. Matthew chapter 28, verse number 18. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. See, the word of the Lord came to Jonah. Here we read that in chapter 1, but I just read where the word of the Lord came to you and has told you to go into all the world, go into all the nations, and teach them about God. But we don't do that. Because they're different, because something's wrong, because they don't, they're not like us, and not even that. Uh, but Jonah was mad. They repented. We read in chapter 3, verse number 10, where uh, this nation had repented, and God saw their works, that they turned from their evil way, and God repented of the evil that he had said he would do unto them, and he did it not. Jonah was mad that God spared the city. Yeah. He wanted God to kill him. Because that was brutal. Hey, hey, the Neo Assyrian Empire was, was a brutal empire. I mean, you think you just do some secular study or history on this, they were brutal. I mean, they they done things that were not good, but at the same time, uh, Jesus Christ died for their soul, Brother Jeff. Uh, uh, the ones that's up here that's homeless or down the road or uh, what you'd say from the wrong side of the tracks or maybe they don't look like you. Thank God today that uh, Jesus died for them too. Why don't we go? Why don't we go? Why don't we go tell them about Jesus? If it's all right with you here in a minute, Brother Jeff, I'm going to tell my story I told you the other day in your basement, if that'd be all right. Uh, man, I, I wasn't raised on the streets. I told that to the church yesterday. You'll get preachers that talk about being raised on the streets. Now, Brother Barry was. I mean, he spent some time in some rough places. But I was a fairly rough fellow myself. Got saved and still fairly rough around the edges. I'm not going to lie. Anybody that knows me knows I ain't a preacher. Pretty rough around the edges. Uh, I'll give you another chance, honey. You didn't need an amen. <laughs> usually amen to stuff like that. It's still pretty rough around the edges. So most of the time, if I'm not preaching, I'll have on a pair of brogan boots with my socks pulled up to my knees, a pair of shorts, a T-shirt with cut-off sleeves, and used to a stubbed nose 357 pistol holster. Now I carry a 9 millimeter. most of the time it's concealed. <laughs> Me and Rebecca, we had went to the national meeting this year. And we were standing, I don't know, four or five miles away from the event center, and we had walked to the store every day. There was a BP station about a mile up from where we was at, and we had walk up a hill and down a hill, and the store's right there on your left. And we had walked there every day. Well, we had decided this day not to walk, and uh, I ended up getting a hankering for something. That, uh, anybody know what a hankering is? Yeah. <laughs> Got a hankering for something, so I, it was 11.30. And I told Rebecca, I said, I didn't run to the store. I'll be right back. She didn't feel like going. And when I say run to the store, I tried to run, Brother Jeff. It was more like roll and try to wreck a little bit. <laughs> so we was walking up the, walking up the road, and uh, there was a lady on the sidewalk there in front of me. She was probably from here to the other side of the fellowship building in front of me. And uh, I had on my brogan boots, had on my shorts, had on my T-shirt, my cut-off sleeves, and a nine millimeter concealed. She couldn't see that part. A ball cap, a camouflage ball cap. 
And I was walking up the road, and them big old boots I had on, I was walking, and I was making, you know, trying to hurry, and I was making a lot of noise, and she kind of looked back, and she seen that I was getting closer, speeding up, you know, I was walking like this right here. I got right up on her, and I told Mr. Preacher Jeff today, I got right up on her, I mean, I was right behind her, and there's a big old rock wall, and up, or a concrete wall, and up that concrete wall was a yard for another hotel. It's about seven or eight foot high. She just lays down, kneels down at this concrete wall. She says, oh, please don't hurt me. Please don't. I said, man, 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 I'm right here. She said, oh, please don't rob me. I don't have much. She said, oh, please don't hurt me. Don't rob me. She said, don't kill me. I said, ma'am. And she was screaming real loud. And she realized I had called her ma'am. And it went from being scared to being angry. And she looked at me. She said, what did you say? I said, ma'am. She said, you're not going to hurt me. I said, no, ma'am. She said, you're not going to rob me. I said, no, ma'am. I said, as a matter of fact, I'm a pastor of a church. <laughs> I, said, uh, I said, we're here for our National Free Will Baptist Association meeting. And she said, you don't look like no preacher I ever said. <laughs> Now this is, I told you that to say this. Brother Jeff, I've been right in the middle. Been right in the middle of a crack house with a white Kia van sitting outside with a wife and three kids, three babies in the back seat. They said, Preacher, what was you doing? I was just trying to tell them about Jesus, Brother Jeff. Yeah. Why? Because I remember one time there was a man who wasn't afraid to go to those places. Yeah, yeah. And he came and he told me about Jesus, Brother Jim. I, I was raised in church. Yeah. Every service, we didn't miss church. However, he told me about Jesus. You said, you took your wife and you had your babies? Yeah, I had one vehicle. I had to take them. Poor, didn't have no other, didn't have no other way. Didn't have no other means. This may offend you, make you mad, but I ain't really worried about that right now. So, I had a lady one time, she said, Preacher, I don't know if I'd have done that if I was you. I said, you would not have done that. That's why God allows me to do it and not you. That's right. Because you won't do it. Amen. Church, we're not willing to go to these places that we think scary or afraid. Or, right. uh, we're, not, we're not willing to go to these places. The Bible tells us in Matthew chapter 28, go to these people and tell them about me. Yes. That they might be able to be saved. You can baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. I and mean, then they can go right back in that place they came out of and tell somebody else about Jesus Christ. But we're running from our responsibility as Christians. Yeah. I'm going to try to hurry, I promise. So not only was Jonah mad that God spared these people, but I want to bring it down a little bit closer. Uh, you know, we may not go you know, on the other side of town or over here, but I got... Have you ever heard the saying, I hope California just falls off into the sea? Anybody <laughs> yeah. ever heard that? Yeah. You know California is the most populous state in the United States. 38,900,000 people live in California, the best I can tell, in 2023. Or 2022. I guess 2023. 38,900,000, almost 39 million people. And we're wanting it to crack off the edge of the United States and go out in the sea and millions of souls die and go to hell. Amen. Church, that don't make sense to me. That's right. Why? Why ain't we willing to go? Why ain't we willing to tell somebody about Jesus? So Jonah, at least, if you will, look with us at chapter 4, verse number 1. I promise I'll hurry through these. Chapter 4, verse number 1. But it displeased Jonah exceedingly and he was very angry. Now, this is right after uh, he had told them their, about their wickedness. God saw their works in verse 10. God saw their works and he turned and turned from their evil way and repented. And now we're in verse number four, or chapter four, verse number one. It says, but it displeased Jonah exceedingly and he was very angry. He was very angry that a whole city, that a whole group of people had turned their uh, uh, ways again. They, they were trying to serve God. Now they had, uh, they had they, according to the scripture here, that uh, they had turned from their evil way and, and God repented of the evil and Jonah was mad about that. Yes. He says in verse number two, and he prayed unto the Lord and said, I pray thee, O Lord, was not this my saying when I was yet in my country? 
And therefore I fled before unto Tarshish, for I knew that thou art a gracious God and merciful, slow to anger and great and of great kindness, and repentest thee of the evil. I want to stop right there, and our next point comes from this. Sometimes we're not willing to go up maybe across town or across country or across the state. We went down to Plymouth up for a few years, was down there about six years. Oh, by the way, some of them watching, Brother Dick. Yeah. <coughs> uh, I know Miss Dolores said she's supposed to be watching if she can get it. She said if she can get it. Uh, so somebody in Plymouth might be watching this service, and I appreciate that. But, yeah. uh, but I want to say this. Uh, he said, now, is this not the word I said in verse number two? Is this not the word I said when I was yet in my country, therefore I fled before him to Tarshish? I mean, we can say this much about Jonah. He might not have wanted to go down to the heathen nation and tell them about Jesus Christ. He may not have wanted to go here, but he at least thought about his own people that he lived with. Church, we might not be willing to go down the road. We might not be willing to go tell somebody across town or over here about Jesus Christ, but man, can't we at least tell those that, uh, that are close around us about Jesus Christ? Yeah. Amen. Amen. What about us, church? Do we minister to our own people? You say, what do you mean by that? I'm talking about our co-workers, our, our family, our friends. Something I've seen to find that to be true over the years. If someone receives a blessing or a good gift from God, uh, maybe they get a raise or promotion and, or somehow God blesses this person or maybe he blesses a family. And uh, I have seen that a lot of times people will despise that person yeah. Yeah. because something good's happened to them. Yeah. The Bible tells us in Romans chapter 12, verse 14 and 15, we may read there in a minute, uh, that if someone weeps, we're supposed to weep with them. But if they're to rejoice, then uh, we're supposed to rejoice with them. But uh, instead of rejoicing when a good thing's happened to somebody, we want to despise that person and be angry and be mad. And, uh, or maybe they're going through some kind of trial or tribulation. Or, or maybe they have been overtaken in a fault and need a spiritual man or a spiritual woman uh, uh, to restore such a one in the spirit of meekness uh, uh, because they have thought of their own life, the Bible says. Yes. Maybe they need somebody who's willing to help them through some type of trial or trouble. Maybe them be, being overtaken in a fault. But most will mock or laugh, make fun, or they'll condemn instead of call on the Lord. They'll plaster instead of pray. Brother Jeff just mentioned the word plaster all over Facebook. Maybe we'll plaster instead of pray. We'll gossip instead of getting them to God or giving them to God. You see, Jonah thought about his own people, but Jeff, I believe we've got to the point in this country and even closer here that, that we don't even care about those that's, that's around us. That's right. yeah. We don't even care about the one sitting on the church pew next to right. us. Right. I mean, you can't get along with those that's in this yeah. building who look like you. If you can't get along, you can't be kind and compassionate and love those that's sitting right beside you on your church pew. Then uh, what makes you right. think that you'll ever be able to reach the lost and dying world and uh, those that don't look like you, those that you can't relate with? Yeah. Yeah. You say, preacher, a while ago you were preaching about all these things. I, I can't, you say, I had somebody tell me one time, I said, I can't relate to a drug dealer's preacher. I've never been in their shoes. I said, no, but bless God, you let a millionaire come to church. Uh, you can't relate to one of them either. That's right. <laughs> oh, man. Brother Good. Yeah. I can't relate to one of them. Anyhow, put that way, Brother Jim. But they'll come to church. Yeah. And so, see, John at least thought about his own place, but we don't even do that anymore. And I'm going to say this, and then we'll hurry on. i got one more point after this, and I'll try to hurry. But I want to say it like this. Up at church at one time, and I, and I meant to say it before church. I'll show you real quick, real quick, uh, how far the church world has, has fallen or how far the church world has gotten from God. Right here. My daughter got saved Sunday. You did, you did, you did better than I thought you was going to do Hey, hit Brother Jeff, it tore me up too, brother. <laughs> Last Sunday night was fifth Sunday, and I'm not, I'm not ashamed of this. It happened for a reason. Everything that happened last Sunday happened for a reason. 
it was fifth Sunday. We don't have service on fifth Sunday night. And uh, we was going to go to church where my brother-in-law preaches at and listen to him and be in service with them. And uh, But we didn't do that, Brother Jeff. Me and my wife, we got together. My obligation had been fulfilled. I felt like uh, our church didn't have service Sunday night, so I put on my, uh, not broke in, but put on my flip-flops, put on my shorts, went to the lake, uh, grilled me a cheeseburger and swam a little bit. I did. Come home, we got to the house, and it was, I don't know, it was 6, 7 o'clock, and uh, I, went, I had laid in the bed and wasn't doing nothing. I mean, we, our church wasn't having service, laying in the bed, and uh, they came home, and Rebecca come in the house. I'd already fell asleep. Rebecca come in there and said, Honey, Kylie's got something she needs to tell you. And I knew, Brother Jeff, I knew what it was. Like, the devil was fighting her when she got up off the altar, Brother Jeff. I don't like something the devil ain't fighting. Anyhow, she comes to the house, and uh, she's crying, and she's nervous, and she's worried, and she... I, you know, whatever it is, maybe maybe the devil's fighting her. She, maybe, maybe mom and daddy won't believe. Maybe mom and daddy will be mad, whatever it was. And they said, you need to tell him, Connie. Brother Jeff, she looked up at me, heartbroken. Her, I mean, just tears feel ugly crying. Like I am, just ugly crying. She said, Daddy, God saved me. Church, there was a time. I mean, I'm glad you, I'm glad you responded the way you did. Church, there was a time when you hear about somebody getting saved and the church would shout. Hey, they, they, hey brother, uh, brother Jerry said that somebody ain't been saved. Somebody been saved every Sunday morning for a month. Right, Brother Jeff? Hallelujah! That's a done when it's poured and blood up from the depths of hell. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. Maybe they don't look like us. Maybe they don't act like us. Maybe they don't. Yes, sir, preacher. That's good stuff. Maybe they don't do the things we do. We can't even minister to the ones that's closest to us. We have we have mothers and fathers that's dying and going to hell. Yeah. We have children that are dying and going to hell. Yeah. We have brothers and sisters and aunts and uncles. I mean, we have close family members, Brother Jeff, that is dying. And if they die in the state that they're in, they will die and split hell wide open. Yeah. And you know what a good common a good common phrase is? It's hard to minister, hard to talk to your family about God. Yeah. It better not be. Yeah. Because maybe there's another church down the road that won't go visit your son or your right. daughter. Maybe they won't go visit your mother or your father and they need to hear you say it. Amen. Give you another good example right here. Get ready to come up here in a few few months. Preacher, I know you're going to shake my hand anyhow. <laughs> yes, sir. We'll sit at the Thanksgiving table yeah. and we'll be right across from a lost person and we'll say, can you can you pass me the mashed taters, please? Mashed taters, can you get you can you pass me the gravy? You get the gravy. Will you come to church with me? You know you need to be saved. You know things are not right in your life with God. We can ask for something at a dinner table at Thanksgiving. We can tell them, uh, you know, we can talk about racing or hunting and fishing. We can talk about all kinds of things, but we can't tell them about Jesus Christ. Because we won't even minister to our own families. We won't minister to our own church folks. We're not going to minister to the lost and dying world. And then this is the last point, if you will, look with us in chapter number four. Verse number one. But it displeased John exceedingly, and he was very angry. And he prayed unto the Lord and said, I pray thee, O Lord, was not this my saying when I was in my yet in my country, but therefore I fled before into Tarshish, for I knew that thou art a gracious God and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness, and repentest thee of the evil. Now, therefore, O Lord, take, I beseech thee, my life from me, for it is better for me to die than to live. This man had got to the point where he says that it's better for him to have died than for this nation to have repented, or this city to have repented and got their lives straight with God. But a point, the next point is coming out of verse number four. It says, Then said the Lord, Doest thou well to be angry? And I guess the Lord was asking Jonah, do you have a reason to be angry? You know, I guess it's how, he, how, how that's worked or how he was, he was stating that. But I do want to read a few things to you real quick. I want to ask you a question. Are you willing to go places that nobody else will go to win someone to the Lord? 
Are you willing to go to the place that Brother Barry Spears was at before he got right with God? Are you willing to go there? You say, no, but he mentioned in the message that the Holy Ghost went. You're right. That's true. Uh -huh. He did go. Yeah. Holy Ghost is there. <laughs> but would you go into a place that he said that he was at that uh, that morning he woke up, Brother Jeff, he said he, what, he was out for about two hours. said he woke up, he could hear the rumble of the Harleys. He could smell the alcohol and the, uh, the marijuana burning. And he said you could hear the loud music, the rock and roll. And he said and all of a sudden it just, would you go into that building he was in and witness to those people that's in that building? You say, Preacher, I'm not up to ask. I'm not up for answering questions. Well, I've got... The Lord asked Jonah a question here. He said... In verse number four, doest thou well to be angry? And I guess the Lord was asking, is it right for you to be angry, John? Is it, are you justified in being angry? And so Jonah is, in expressing his anger to God, was being honest about his feelings. Something good that he was being honest about his feelings, I guess, but we should not for a moment think that all of our feelings toward God are justified. Right. Man. Our feelings toward God are not always justified. Yes. And God likes to ask us questions. Now this is coming from um, Enduring Word Bible Commentary. Better get that out there. I don't want to get in trouble for plagiarism. But God likes to ask us questions because they reveal our hearts. It also puts us on proper ground before God because he has every right to question us and we owe him an answer. That's right. Are yeah. you willing to go to these places and try to pull people out of the pit of hell? Somebody did for you. Yeah. Somebody did for me. Yes. Yeah. You say, well, I, preacher, I was raised in church. I was too. A great mother and father. I told my church yesterday, as a matter of fact, Brother Jerry knows my mom and daddy very well. Uh, uh, Jerry was my pastor when I was just a little boy, six, seven years old when I first met Brother Jerry, maybe five, uh, probably six or seven, I don't know uh, exactly how old it was, but, uh, but he was my pastor for several years, and then he moved to Nebo and uh, was pastor at Trinity Hill, and he was my wife's pastor for her teenage years, most of them, and uh, then uh, our early adulthood, we got married and was going to Trinity Hill, and Brother Jerry's the one that married me and my wife, and uh, knows my family well. Uh, we didn't miss church. I told, uh, told church yesterday, I said, man, me and my brother had a drug problem just when we were just little. Mom and dad drug us to church. Mm -hmm, yeah. But I, I, Jeff, I've never one time that I remember getting up on a Sunday morning, a Sunday night, or Wednesday night, I never remember, one, not even once, asking mom and daddy, was we going to church? No. Never. No. It was expected of me and my brother to have our clothes on when church time come. And if we didn't, we'd wear stripes to the church house, not just clothes only. They'd be striped to us. He didn't play. Oh, yeah. This is the thing. You say, preacher, I'm not up to answering questions. But I got a few questions here that were, were asked in the Bible. Where are you? And who told you that you were naked? What is this you have done? Genesis chapter 3, verse 9 through 13. Where is Abel, your brother? What have you done? Genesis chapter 4. Why have you despised the word of the Lord to do evil in his sight? 2 Samuel 12, 9. Whom shall I send? Who will go for us? Isaiah 6, 8. What do you say? Who do you say that I am? Matthew 16, 15. What do you, what do you want me to do for you? Matthew 20, verse 32. Are you betraying the Son of Man with a kiss? Luke 22, 48. Saul, Saul. Why are you persecuting me? Acts chapter 9, verse number 4. Church, I believe that uh, the question that needs to be asked today is, are you willing to go to places that nobody else will to see the lost and dying world saved? Right. Somebody's got to go. That's right. So, preacher, I'm afraid. I don't, not, I don't know that lifestyle. I don't, you know, I don't understand all the things. That you, you don't have to understand. You say, <clears throat> you say, you just mentioned about carrying a pistol. Yeah, I carry a pistol pretty much everywhere I go. I don't, you know, I don't. Don't have it with me all the time, but I do carry it quite regular. And I went to went to a place one time, went to a boy's house. I knew Brother Jeff when we was in school, and I had got saved, and he had not got saved yet, and went to his house. And, man, I was in there trying to talk to him about Jesus, and there was a whole bunch of men in that house, young fellas and older gentlemen, that they didn't want to hear about Jesus. And I was standing there trying to talk to that young man about the Lord. 
one of the fellas walked up and he said, what if we just kill you right here? I said, well, now I come to tell you about Jesus. I said, but if you want to fight, I like it too. <laughs> I carry a pistol. I carry two pocket knives and a saw. <laughs> now, I know somebody don't believe I got a saw on the preacher. I know they don't believe me. Two pocket knives. And a saw. <laughs> and a saw. I said, now, we can either use guns, we can use knives, or my personal favorite, we can use fists. It don't matter to me, but I come to tell you about Jesus. Oh. Uh -huh. And I know what people say, well, preacher, that's not right. That's not. Uh, the Bible says the meek shall inherit the earth. He didn't say the weak. He didn't say let nobody run us over. He didn't say that, hey, I'm going to defend myself no matter what you think, whether you like it or not. I'm going to, and if you try to hurt my family, uh, I'm going to be like Brother Keith, uh, Keith Turner told me before church. Uh, we're going to have to call 811. Uh, <laughs> and a Thank you, brother. Somebody understood it. Man said, you mean 911? You mean 911? Said, no, 811. Find out where the wires are because i got to dig a hole. <laughs> if you mess with my family, I will have to dig a hole. There's no other option. Preach on, preach. Not, not playing either. You say, preacher, what is that? Church, God wants us to be kind and gracious and merciful and long-suffering and compassionate. And... Are you willing to go to these places that nobody else is? We'll go to Brother Jeff. Come on, let's go. Let's stand to our feet, if you will. Every head bowed, every eye closed. What a challenge. And when I say what a challenge, are we willing to go to those places? Now, you listen, church. I, this church had, uh, I, well, I've said this many times. If we're not a great commission church, we're no church at all. Uh, this church uh, taught a 12-week soul winning class a couple years ago. 12 weeks, 12 weeks and taught soul winning. You said, why would you do that? Because of Matthew, the last chapter of the book of Matthew. See, a lot of people think it's the pastor's duty. Sure, it doesn't exclude, exclude me. And the Bible also teaches to go into the highways and hedges and compel them to come in. But are we willing to go to those places he's talked about? In that 12-week soul winning class, there's people sitting in this congregation that has never personally had an opportunity. Well, no, you've had the opportunity, but never have led somebody talked to somebody, showed somebody how to be saved. And I'm going to say it again. If we're not a soul, listen, conscious, and if we're not, and if we're not a great commission church, we ain't a church. You can't call the place you attend worship a church if it's not concerned about souls and if it's not going outside those doors that's the reason we have a bus ministry. That's the reason we have evangelism teams. What's evangelism team, preacher? We got door hangers that we go out and we just yeah. hang it. Hey, it don't. You don't have to knock on a door. Thank you, Lord. Hey, where's one at up here? They want up here. We don't have to knock on a door. Hey, Amen. We're just giving them the gospel. Just let you can leave it on a car. I'm talking about. Listen, there's folks dying and dropping off into hell. And what are we doing? People, somebody be saved. You know, yesterday morning they shouted. They, they, they give God the glory and praise. But the whole house should have, should have been so overwhelmed with one person giving their hard life to the Lord. But see, John 3.16 don't mean nothing no more. To you. Hey, to me. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Yes. That don't move you. Him, it ought to move us. On, I'll say, God help me. 
But if we're not a great commission church, you can't call yourself a church. You can bow your head. She's playing. She's playing uh, real softly. Anybody need to pray? Anybody need to pray? Help us, Lord. Some are coming around the altar. Come on. Come on. Thank God for the blood. Yes. It's good to have the Parsons family with us. Amen. From Goshen, Indiana. Anybody never heard the Parsons family? Never heard them? All right. Amen. 
All right, brother. Hallelujah. Amen. Let me say something about the message. I, again, that was a challenging sermon. But here's something at going home church, and I can speak for going, to going home that are here this morning. First started the work here at going home church, and I don't want this to never happen again. We used to get 200, this is not brag, we'd knock about 200, 200 homes a week through this community. Okay, now don't you listen. Here's the sad part. Just right out the Matilda Avenue right here. We knock on a door. A lady comes to the door. We invite her to the house of the Lord. I'm talking about just steps right out the road here. About at the other end of, of, of Matilda. She said, Preacher, I've lived here, and this was back in 1993, 4, 5. She says, I've lived here for 20 years, preacher. 20 years I've lived right here. Bless him, You're the first church that's ever knocked on my door. Anybody know the churches that are around this area? The first church that ever knocked on my door and invited me to the house of God. Now you say, did she come? My recollection, she never came. But there was a seed planted. Amen. And we're not responsible Amen. for them to come. That's right. All God's people say it. Amen. Hallelujah. Pray for the Parsons family. Amen. Lift them up to Jesus. Bless then we'll turn this through.
desire this whole, my whole life. And since I accepted him as Savior, I knew that God had a work for us or for me to do. And uh, many different things he has called me to do. Uh, not just up here on stage, but he said to go and tell others about it. Amen. When we're not up here on stage and we're home, we're working at our church. We are submerged uh, before we started singing and traveling. That's all we did. We were at the church, I believe, more than we were home. That's just the way that I was taught to work in the church and to be there. My brother penned this correctly, I believe. There's so much work to do. And your preacher can't do it all. But he's asked you to. This song says, Lord, there's so much work to do, and nobody wants to work for you. The harvest is ripe, but the laborers are so few. Oh, sinful world to bleed and die. 
God good. Amen. I can't thank him enough. Can't thank him enough. It's good to have Brother Jerry McLean. Amen. Amen. He pastors the Redeemed Free Will Baptist Church here in the county. Uh, met Brother Jerry many years ago. I think back in about 1991. Might be about that area. 1990. Was you a little boy then? Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, thank you, brother. I appreciate, I appreciate that. Appreciate that. Uh, but anyway, uh, you pray for Brother Jerry. You lift him up to the Lord as he br- comes and shares his heart, brings us the word of God today. I have asked... Uh, Dear sister, to come back and sing. I'm going to spend about three minutes, if I can. If I can. You don't believe you've got a three-minute preacher. But uh, I'm, I'm just going to spend about three minutes, if I could, uh, delivering uh, just a word. I, I, really, I really wasn't settled uh, in what I needed to preach today. Uh, I pulled an outline out of the file cabinet last evening of a sermon. I got up this morning, went uh, early this morning into my study and pulled another outline that I thought would uh, be sufficient for the hour, but I haven't got leadership, haven't got the red light to preach either one of those today. But uh, Brother Ben has has certainly preached enough for all of us today. I, I probably don't need to share one other thing other than this. And two two quick things that I want to make mention of, that I am glad that there was a Sunday school teacher of a young 19-year-old teenage boy that got a burden in her heart 
for a little long-haired boy yes. with handlebar mustaches that just was going to church because there was another 18-year-old girl there that her daddy said that as long as I went to church with his daughter, that I could go with her every time the church door was open. And you know what this little old 19-year-old boy did? I went to church, Brother Ernie. Every single time the doors of that church was open. Revival, Wednesday night service. Uh, they called it a Sunday night service. They called it, they met at six, they met at six o'clock before the seven o'clock service, and they had like a little Bible study. Uh, they called it a union meeting where they'd get together and have a little Bible study before the preaching. I went to them because I got to go with Darlene. But you know what that you know what that Sunday school teacher told me? She never told me I needed to get a haircut. She never told me my mustache was too long. She never told me my mouth was too filthy. She never told me none of those things. But you know what she told me? She said, I love you. <laughs> she said, I love you. And uh, you know what happened one Wednesday night in an old 1978 truck? I found out that somebody really loved me. And I so deeply appreciate the fact that there was a Sunday school teacher that told an old 19-year-old teenage boy that she loved me. And uh, we're on Facebook. I hate Facebook. Uh, I, I don't know if you all do it. I hate it. And I know I'm in the pulpit and I'm using a great big word when I say hate. But I hate Facebook. But on our Facebook services at our church, you know who my top fan is? You know who my top fan is? Yes, Lord. My Sunday school teacher. <laughs> Thank God that somebody wasn't too busy enjoying their blessings that they forgot about that they needed a burden for a little teenage boy. And I got saved because of a little sister called Linda Googe, and I'm saved today because of that. Would the Parsons family come back? I want to share another thought that the Lord's placed in my heart that I want to share with you while they, while they sing just another song. Brother, I, I should have come to you and told you to stay up here. Amen. That's right. I've never met you, brother, but I sort of feel like there's a little kindred spirit between us. I never met this little family. There, how, the, how in the world have I not met you all? Amen. Brother Steve Wagers is a good friend of mine, as close a preacher friend as I have in this world is Brother Steve. And he and I, we talk all the time. And uh, Brother Jeff, we I, I share thoughts with him, and he shares thoughts with me. And I'll say, preacher, I preach this. And he'll say, boy, do you mind if I preach that? I say, brother, do that. I do, do whatever you want to do. And he, he's always sending me something. Always, we're always doing that. I don't know if, if, if you... If, you, do you do that? I don't know if you have a friend that you, and uh, I, I say this, preacher, you can use what I preach anytime. I don't care. But uh, Brother Steve preached a message here a while back about one more shot. And when he preached that one more shot, uh, man, I got a thought from that. And uh, I, I've, I've preached that thought. I've got about five sermons that the Lord has placed in my heart. And I preached one of those yesterday. And it goes right along with what you preached today, Brother Ben. And uh, about those two thieves that were on that cross. Yes, sir. Two criminals. The Matthew calls them male factors, which you interpret that word, that word male factor literally means criminals. <laughs> One last shot. The man in the middle, the one that was dying for sin, was uh, arranged with a criminal on his left and a criminal on his right. 
but he gave them both one last shot. Yes, sir. One took advantage right. and one didn't. Amen. But that sinner that got saved, that, that criminal that accepted the Lord as his personal Savior, he did something that, that, that is so unchurchy. He wasn't baptized. He, never, he didn't know a gospel song. He didn't have a verse of scripture to quote. He'd probably never, probably never heard anything about the word. <laughs> he didn't recite a sinner's prayer and never read anywhere in that scripture that he did anything scripturally that we are so hung up on. He just simply said, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. He just said, Lord, remember me. Lord, would you remember an old criminal, a malefactor, a thief, a, a dirty, low-down, rotten sinner, would you remember me? And you know what the Lord said? Do you know what the Lord said to the most unlikely candidate? that you and I would have ever picked. He looked over at a dirty, low-down, rotten criminal, a sinner, a malefactor, somebody that was guilty of a place called hell. But you know what he said today? Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. I can see the Lord Jesus Christ as, as death went, uh, went out of him. And I, I can see the Lord as, as he had fulfilled his obligation to redeem mankind and make a way. But as he went, still he had a job to be fulfilled. Three days were yet to be accomplished. And Jesus Christ still had a mission and that he needed to, and to succeed in. And he went to the center of the earth. He went to literally paradise. What the Old Testament saints, what you and I, what you and I hey listen we're looking forward to. What you and I today are enjoying. The old saints of God hadn't got to enjoy that yet. But Jesus Christ at his death before he resurrected he went to the heart of the earth. He went to paradise. I can hear old Moses. I can hear Elijah. I can hear Abraham as they looked up ahead and said there he comes there he comes there's a lamb slain from the foundation of the world there he is we've been looking for you we've been expecting you we've been watching and waiting for you oh paradise was shouting and praising God but about that time they looked up and they said who's that with him <laughs> Who's that with him? Who's that man with him? I guess that old thief shouted for a moment or two. Hey, I guess he shouted for a moment or two. And he looked around and he said, there's something really to this. And listen, let me say this. He got to see things that others never got to see. He got to experience things that others never got to experience. But oh, let me say this. I'm so glad that Jesus Christ saves old sinners. We're not low enough. We don't stink enough. Hey, listen, we've not done enough. Hey, but what the darling Lamb of God won't reach his loving arm down and scoop us up out of the mess we're in. Thank God he saves old sinners. What a blessing. No wonder it didn't get anything. Would you sing? Sing me something, okay? That 
you thankful for mercy how about a first chance a second chance a third chance a fourth chance we can keep it going can't we i thank god he's a merciful gracious god i mean enjoy the services this morning Lord, god's blessed it amen thank you for coming out i'd like for these two preachers if they will to go to the door let you you let them know how much you appreciate them uh, I believe God's met with us this morning. I don't believe I know God has. And uh, all the pastors that are um, uh, visiting and all those that are uh, supporting this meeting, God bless you for that. Uh, I know Brother Larry will be on Wednesday morning. Brother Jeff, I think, is on Friday, Friday morning. And uh, uh, anyway, we've got an itinerary there on the, uh, the table, a uh, flyer. Uh, I think they even got a little itinerary. Uh, with the morning preachers, okay? Now, uh, we're just going to come to have church. That might be the itinerary, but we don't know what's going to happen. Amen? So, uh, you know, I, I don't have a problem scheduling things. I believe uh, God is in order. And when things are done, if he's in it, it will be decent and in order. Uh, but we also want to be sensitive to his spirit. Now, our ladies preparing lunch every day. So we've got ladies that's been laboring over the meal today. So we want you to stay, all right? It's good, and, too, preacher. They done gave me some. Oh, I got you. I got a little snack before church. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Preacher? Yes, sir. Can I say one thing? Yes, sir, preacher. I didn't preach, so I, I'm sort of entitled to say this. <laughs> if I had a seen Ben walking behind me like that. Uh, yes, sir. <laughs> 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 Amen. Yeah. He, he told me that story in my basement the other day and I thought I was going to die I could just see Ben in them boots 
And that little woman. <laughs> I better hush. Just lean on.